Next up on the prophetic calendar is the rapture. We'll be discussing that today on Zola Levitt Presents. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. For there is no difference between the Jew and the Greek. For the same Lord over all is rich unto all that call upon him. Zola Levitt Presents. Shalom Havarim and welcome to Zola Levitt Presents. I'm David Hart. And I'm Kirsten Hart. Jeffrey Seif. We are in our series, Thy Kingdom Come, which first aired in 2001 with our founder, Zola Levitt. He passed on in 2006, but we're able to have his teaching. And how many times have you and I said, we wish that we could have sat at this table with Zola. And just chat and right. learn from him. So we think that you may have some stories. Well, baby, if you can't be with the one you love, love the one you're with. <laughs> yeah. but, we do. But we listen, do. kudos one to you. Good. That's Shalom Chavarim, baby. Thank you're really you. getting the, you're getting the gist of this thing. Natural. Yes. <laughs> one good story. Oh, listen, I'll story. tell you what I liked about him the most. He was authentic. I used to say that he was the authentic article in a world of frauds. Love him or hate him, he was direct, he was to the point. He had a kind of down-to-earthiness that really uh, distinguished him in Christian television that was so hyped up. Right, that's how we feel too. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Right now, let's go to Zola's teaching in Israel. Well, we're going to talk about the rapture, and we've come to a very special cemetery where Many people lie here who the Lord will definitely <clears throat> call to him. These are the first missionaries to the Jews uh, in modern Israel. Uh, some of th these graves go back to the oh, uh, beginning of the 1800s and so on. And little children and, and, and uh, the, the Bishop of Jerusalem, uh, uh, all of them, some with Hebrew lettering on their uh, tombstones and so on truly witnesses to those to whom the gospel goes first, to the Jews. As Jesus said when he came to this earth in Matthew 10, 5 and 6, I come only unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And uh, those were the instructions he gave his disciples. And when we leave this earth in the rapture, the, the uh, great uh, translation of the church to heaven, uh, 1 Thessalonians 4:16, uh, we'll hear a shout I'm sure you know the verse, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Uh, the next verse says comfort one another with these words, and that's what we're doing. We're teaching about the rapture, and I hope you are greatly comforted because by golly, you're going to defeat death. This is the greatest promise, I suppose, in all the scripture. And it's a promise you can't get anywhere else. Only Jesus Christ is going to make a reappearance. You know, here in Jerusalem, there is an empty tomb. Uh, this is Jesus' tomb, they say. But it, anyhow, there's an empty tomb somewhere from which he rose. And, uh, you know, uh, Reverend Vanderhoven, the retired director of the Christian Embassy in Jerusalem, said, you know, if he, if he went to the tomb of Mohammed or the tomb of Buddha, he would find them sealed, the body still inside, uh, buried, dead, and not come out. And, and if he stood there and said, help me, well, they would say, help you? Well, we couldn't even help ourselves. <laughs> he says, but if the empty tomb of Christ doesn't have to say anything, just see that it's empty, and that's help enough. Now, uh, the scripture begins in uh, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 and 14. The subject is that the people in Thessalonica wrote to Paul uh, asking about the dead. Uh, some people in the church had died uh, and Paul had preached, you know, that the Lord is, is soon to return. And that's correct teaching in any Christian generation. He may, he may. So we always remind people that he's on his way. Uh, if he tarries, he tarries, but we still need to remind people that Christ may come at any moment, and he had done that with them. And he's the one who taught them of this term, rapture, uh, raptura in the uh, 
uh, Latin Vulgate Bible and it came to the English word rapture. But anyhow, it's, it's the word for caught up. That's how it is. The Lord catches us up like the fish in the net in, in, the, uh, in the gospel. And uh, when people tell you the word rapture isn't in the scripture, it is. It's the English words caught up. It's, it's simply a Latin word. Uh, but they were concerned for the people that had fallen asleep, they called it. And he wrote to them saying this in uh, 1 Thess 4.13, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. Don't uh, be like unbelievers, he says. For if we believe that Jesus died and rose again, even so, them also which sleep in Jesus will God bring with him. He is the example. His tomb is empty. Uh, this rapture is coming. It's uh, at an unexpected time is is uh, one problem with it that is Christians ought to be living like Christians and occupied uh, with God's uh, work uh, at all times because we don't know when he's coming. He said in Luke 12, 40, be ye therefore ready also for the son of man cometh at an hour when ye think not. So <laughs> there's a warning. You know, when uh, Christ uh, went with his disciples to the upper room, he revealed so much there. Uh, John 14, 1 to 3 said, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. Uh, in my Father's house are many mansions. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go, I'll come back and take you there so you may be where I am. In other words, uh, he's going to leave, he said, but he's going to return. And he's going to return for the church. And he did do this. He, he, uh, that is, he rose from the dead and he did ascend into heaven. Before he did, you know, he held a Bible school. I would have loved to go to the Lord's 40-day Bible school, six-week Bible school. It says in Acts 1-3, to whom he also showed himself alive after his passion by many infallible proofs, being seen of them 40 days and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Well, that's what we're doing. Uh, I just wish the churches were doing this and the seminaries would, would take their responsibility to teach the things of the kingdom of God. But some of the things I'm saying uh, many Christians are hearing for the first time in their lives, although they've gone to the church their whole life or one of the great seminaries that's that supposed to teach prophecy, but somehow just doesn't do it. Uh, <laughs> you know, I hear all the time prophecy is controversial. Uh, I don't know what the controversy is, but w when, it, when is Christianity not controversial? Uh, it ought to be a doctrine that supersedes all earthly doctrines, and it ought to raise some controversy. Uh, the, the, the ascension of the Lord is also in Acts 1, verses 10 to 11. Uh, they were looking intently up into the sky as he was going, when suddenly two men dressed in white stood beside them. Men of Galilee, they said, Why do you stand here looking into the sky? This same Jesus who's been taken from you into heaven will come back in the same way as you've seen him go into heaven. So not only does he ascend, but he will come back out of heaven the same way. That 40-day Bible school sure changed Peter, didn't it? Before uh, uh, the Lord uh, came out of his grave, Peter was saying uh, uh, he didn't know the man. Three times he denied him. After the Lord taught him 40 days, he could speak at Pentecost of the things of the kingdom. Uh, that is, uh, uh, quoting from the prophet Joel and the Psalms, he was a Bible giant all of a sudden. Well, the rapture comes as a surprise. The Lord described it in other scripture as in the twinkling of an eye or like lightning across the sky. So it's fast, it's sudden, it's hard to predict. When there's a big storm and you hear thunder, you expect lightning, but you don't know in which instant that lightning will come. We know that the Lord is coming, but we don't know what night he's coming. And for this reason, I favor the pre-tribulation rapture over all other theories because the rapture has no event before it, and it comes as a surprise. It, it, without going into all the theology uh, uh, about it, uh, it's so simple to think if it came at the, at the end of the tribulation, it would be quite easy to watch all the events of the tribulation, uh, put the thing on a calendar. Be exactly seven years after the Antichrist makes a covenant with Israel, uh, I could check my calculations when he goes into the temple and blasphemes at the midpoint of the tribulation. Three and a half years later, uh, the book of Revelation gives me the, the, the 1260 days and so on. I, I can't miss it. I, I could be packed the night the Lord comes if, uh, 
if I, it were that simple that it's at the end of the tribulation. Likewise, in the middle of the tribulation, I could be packed. When I, <laughs> you don't need to pack anything in the, in the rapture. Of course, the Lord has all you need uh, for your whole eternal life. But uh, uh, we used to say this on the radio when I had a program where people could call in and, and we decided not to say uh, uh, that we'll be packed for the rapture because we would start a denomination called Packers, people that carry luggage around to show that they're going to be ready uh, when the rapture occurs. But anyhow, in our book that the ministry has uh, raptured, uh, written years ago, Dr. McCall and I wrote it, and uh, we have a chapter called Pre-Trib versus Mid-Trib versus Post-Trib versus No-Trib. There's people out there, could you believe, that, that, that don't think there's a rapture at all, in spite of all the scripture I just quoted, but uh, we deal even with that position. But we take up each position fairly, and with good reason that we give in that book, we come down strongly as pre-tribulation rapture folks. So, if the rapture does not occur, I'll be back right after this. Our resource this week, the book Raptured by Dr. Thomas S. McCall and Zola Lovett. Packed with relevant scriptures, this book presents the various views of when the rapture of the church might happen and suggests which view seems most correct. This doctrine is not always understood by the church, but it will affect everyone on earth in the twinkling of an eye. Contact us and ask for the book, Raptured. Our founder, Zola Levitt, established this ministry in 1979. Today, we continue bringing you the good news of Messiah and the truth about Israel via television, our newsletter, and the internet. If you believe that this Bible teaching ministry is worthy of your assistance, then please call us at 1-800-WONDERS or visit us at levitt.com. We sincerely appreciate your prayers and your financial support. We want to thank you for your support as we continue explaining the Jewish roots of our Christian faith. Right now, let's go back to Zola's teaching on the rapture. You know, in my ministry, uh, <laughs> people have thought it's a novelty that, that I want to witness to the Jews, but I'm standing by a grave of a man, a doctor, who, uh, it says MD after his name, missionary to the Jews, died 1826. Uh, this has been a mission ever since Jesus did it, and in all generations, it's just, I don't know what, it's better tolerated today or whatever. Anyhow, about the, uh, the Lord's coming, Matthew 24, 40 says, Then shall two be in the field, the one taken and the other left. Two women shall be grinding at the mill, the one taken, the other left. You know, you can see this working out in, uh, say, in the first century field where there is a Jew and a Gentile working a farm together. Uh, there were people in the land, sojourners at that time. Uh, they might have been field workers and... Uh, uh, then the Feast of Trumpets would come, symbolic of the rapture, the trumpet sounds. Uh, from the temple they blew a trumpet and then that was repeated from field to field throughout the land. A trumpeter, a uh, shofar player would sound the call and the Jews would immediately report to their worship, the Feast of Trumpets, the end of the harvest. Uh, and, and the Gentile uh, uh, would finish uh, uh, taking the crops, of course, it wasn't his festival. So there you saw acted out uh, uh, the Lord uh, one, one, uh, taking one from a field but leaving the other and so on. Now when is all this going to happen? Well, soon and very soon, says the hymn, uh, and, and, and why not? Uh, and who's going? Well, um, first of all, <laughs> the church itself is, is all going. And, you know, Revelation 3.10 describes just that it's before the tribulation in this way, because thou hast kept the word of my patience. This is addressed to the, the good church, the, the church of Philadelphia. Out of the seven churches, it's the one uh, which receives nothing but uh, commendations and no uh, uh, criticisms from the Lord. He says, because thou hast kept the word of my patience, I also will keep thee from the hour of temptation, which shall come upon all the world to try them that dwell upon the earth. So uh, before the tribulation, every Christian goes, uh, you know, this question of uh, uh, a partial rapture used to come up on my radio program. Somebody told me one day only the, the good Christians are going. Well, I don't know any. Uh, <laughs> you know, the physician comes to heal the sick. 
uh, the, the church is, uh, as Moish Rosen of Jews for Jesus said once, uh, uh, the church is not a museum for saints, it's a hospital for sinners. Uh, the people that are going need to go, let me put it that way, I need to go. Uh, I certainly need a new body, I can tell you that. But, uh, you know, we shouldn't predict when the rapture is coming. That's a mistake. In 1988, if you remember, there was a book circulated. It was given away, really. And all over the country, and people got excited. The rapture was going to be, I think it was September 11th, 1988. He'd calculated the simple arithmetic 40 years since uh, uh, a generation uh, uh, and so on. It, 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 was, uh, it went defunct, of course, immediately after the 11th because it wasn't the rapture. Nothing changed. Uh, the Prestonwood uh, Baptist Church in Dallas uh, had me come in the next year in 1989 to, to uh, do a six-week uh, uh, teaching on uh, uh, 89 reasons why we can't predict the rapture. We shouldn't predict the rapture. If somebody convinced you that the rapture is, say, a month from now, well, my goodness, uh, you could make credit card purchases, etc. Uh, I, I laugh because uh, somebody said, don't do that, because when you get to the judgment seat of Christ in heaven, uh, you may see those receipts on his desk. <laughs> That's quite possible. The church doesn't go through the tribulation for another reason, because it's not mentioned from Revelation 4, verse 1, in which a trumpet sounds, all the way out to Revelation 19. The world is in tremendous calamity, and uh, uh, things are, 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 judgments are falling all over the place. People are dying, but there's no instruction given to the church as to what to do about this or where to hide or, or where to go. Uh, I don't think that the church is here at all in the tribulation. I think we have all, every believer in Jesus Christ, gone on before and then in the rapture. All souls that are conscious once are conscious for eternity. We all have eternal life. The question is, are we with God or are we not with God? Uh, John 5, uh, 28, 29 says this, Marvel not at this, for the hour is coming in the which all that are in the graves shall hear his voice and shall come forth. They that have done good unto the resurrection of life and they that have done evil unto the resurrection of damnation. I'm afraid so. Uh, these graves will open, and uh, this good missionary to the Jews and this good bishop of Jerusalem and all these others will come out and will go to, to the Lord. Every grave will open, and uh, unbelievers will then be bound with Satan unto judgment at the end. We'll talk in uh, later programs about that. Uh, believers uh, uh, go on to uh, be with the Lord, and we'll be conscious always. Uh, everybody will have an eternal life. It's just some will be with God and some will not. Uh, that is the important point. Uh, the Jews say the Old Testament doesn't speak of, of, of this division, this resurrection, but it does. Daniel 12, 2 and 3 says this, And many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall awake, some to everlasting life and some to shame and everlasting contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament. And they that turn many to righteousness as the stars forever and ever. My goodness. Now, in the New Testament, we learn that uh, uh, all men die, of course. It's appointed unto men once to die and then the judgment. But Jesus is the first example of the permanent resurrection. He is uh, the first fruit of those that uh, have died. Uh, you know, it says this in, in 1 Corinthians uh, 15, 20 to 23, but now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept. For since by man came death, by man also came the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order. Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ's at his coming. So I think we all have a number in this resurrection. Or we go in ranks, or we go with our church or, or our contemporary somehow. Because, you know, the gospel says the hairs of your head are all numbered. Uh, the dead in Christ rise first. Obviously, they have lower numbers. Uh, and then uh, we are changed. Uh, the, the change says uh, uh, that, that our bodies are reconstituted for eternal life. Again, uh, uh, the Jews say it's not in the Old Testament. It certainly is. Uh, Job 14, 13 to 15. Oh, that thou wouldst hide me in the grave, that thou wouldst keep me secret until thy wrath be passed. That, that is the tribulation. The Old Testament saints will be raised at the end of the great tribulation. Uh, that thou wouldst appoint me a set time and remember me. A set time in Hebrew, a tmuna, 
like the time of your military hitch. It is a set time. It's a precise time that ends at a precise moment. Job philosophizes, if a man dies, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. Thou shalt call, and I will answer thee. Thou wilt have a desire to the work of thine hands. Job says, I, uh, no matter how long I'm in the grave, you'll want the work of your hands. Job's body, my body, he says. And uh, he triumphantly says in a verse we all quote, Job 19:25, For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh will I see God. You know, death, our common fear, is totally defeated uh, by this rapture. It says we shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. Uh, that's 1 Corinthians 15, 51 to 53. And the Christian ultimately does not even fear death. Uh, it is the last enemy, the Bible says, but Christ defeats it. And finally, in 1 Corinthians 15, 55 and 57, it says this. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? The sting of death is sin, and the strength of sin is the law. But thanks be to God, which giveth us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. We are back at the table right now with Dr. Seif. So great to be with you today. And uh, Kirsten and I, I think you may know this, we both grew up in the church. I'm a pastor's son, minister of music's daughter. We grew up in kind of different denominations and we've heard some different doctrine on the rapture. And I have a feeling that in messianic circles, there's different views on the rapture too. Is that yeah, correct? Well, you know, there's always confusion at the borders of knowledge. Right. People weren't talking about Bible prophecy in Israel years ago. Uh, and I'm glad that it's back on the table with the wonderful events like the reconstitution of Israel as a nation state. Mm -hmm. People are looking at what's got up to in the world and how does it relate to the Jews and the world to come? So with all things new, there's always confusion, but I can live with the confusion. Even if people don't all have the right answers, they're asking the right question. What's God up to in the world? I think with Zola, the Thessalonian text is a principal go-to one. Therein we're told specifically the Lord is going to come down, the trumpet's going to blow and we're out of here. What do you guys think of that? Uh We've, we sang that song. Do you remember the song, Two Men Walking Up a Hill, One Disappears and One's Left Standing Still? Do you remember that? Mm -hmm. I wish we'd all been ready. And I think I kind of grew up. That's an old thinking, folk. Was that Keith Green? Yes, yeah, it is an one old, old one. Old but it was it's dating us. Yeah. But it was <laughs> almost like it's going to be a scary thing, you know, right. and you've been left behind. It's yeah. just, it was a scary, but it's not a scary event. Well, it is a warning. You know, we want to be ready. People are moved either by fear of punishments or promises of rewards. You know, quit smoking. I need to quit smoking. But you go to the doctor and he says, listen, if you do quit smoking, you can do this. And if you don't quit smoking, you're going to die. Sometimes people need motivated. They need prodded a little bit. So I understand the gospel text about the story of being taken away. But here, this is framed as good news. In verse 18 of chapter 4, we're told to encourage one another, to infuse courage. And speaking of encouraging one another, and I don't want to ramble here. I want to hear no, from you. Good. But I want to speak to the viewers about the words one another. We all exist in webs of relationships. This story is important. 
it's not only important as old lover presents that we make some new friends, but it's important to get the word out about God, what he is up to in the world today. Would you please uh, encourage your friends, neighbors, and coworkers to take a look at the good book with Zola Levitt Presents. We're on social media, we're on television. Talk about the program and let them know there's a new world dawning and Zola Levitt Presents is gonna give insights on how that new world is arising. That's right. I may be off here, forgive me, but I'm not sure if I'm hearing a whole lot about rapture in the pulpit these days. Well, there's less and less, I think. People think, well, you know, those crazies. Listen, I frankly was embarrassed to talk about Bible prophecy because there's so many crazies out here in the marketplace of religious right. ideas. I remember I sat down and had a conversation with the advisor in my doctoral program, Billy Abraham, who took a, his PhD out of Oxford University. I did my dissertation under him and I said, you know, I don't want to talk so much about Bible prophecy because it's so riddled with conjecture and I don't want to be associated with the crazies. I thought he'd go in his English accent, well, yes, Jeffrey, you have a point. <laughs> but he said, no, Jeff, listen, uh, all the more there's a need for people that want to be responsible theologians to offer a cogent telling of these things. Because if those of us that are more responsibly trained in theology don't give voice to these things, then we give it over to the crazies by right. default, which is one of the reasons why I say, not just in talking to you, but in talking to you, please tell your friends to join me, we, us, as we unpack truths in biblical literature that are relevant for you today. And I like that word truth. I know you're about to say something, sorry, because we've seen the crazies. The crazies make the news. Not all of this, but the crazies make the news and saying, he's coming out in October, here's the date. And we can't predict because it said no man knows. I didn't send a man, right. right? What time? What does the pastor's kid think of that? <laughs> <laughs> it's scripture and it's relevant for today. And that's what we're all about on yes. Zola Levitt Presents. The Hebrew word truth, emet, comes from the first letter of the Hebrew alphabet, the middle letter of the Hebrew alphabet, and the last letter of the Hebrew alphabet to pull it all together. And that's what we want to do in these programs uh, with our guests. And here our guest is our founder, really, who's speaking to us from the grave with an older series. But the name of the game is Get the Story Straight and Get the Story Out. Yes, Thanks for helping. and truth, that's yeah. good. I can't believe how quick this went today. It's time to end our program. End us. Sha'alu Shalom Yerushalayim. Pray, Pray for, for the, the peace, peace of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Our monthly newsletter, The Levitt Letter, is free and full of insightful articles and news commentary from a messianic perspective. Visit levitt.com to find our newsletter along with current and past programs, our television schedule, and much more. Don't forget to order this week's resource by calling 1-800-WONDERS, or you can purchase it from our store at levitt.com. Your donations to Zola Levitt Ministries help these organizations bless Israel. Thanks again for joining us this week. Zola Levitt Ministries and this television program depend on tax-deductible donations from viewers like you. This has been a paid program brought to you by Zola Levitt Ministries.